the NBA called and said, uh, you can't leave. There might be a possibility you're winning the MVP. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me. I don't even want it, right? Just keep it. After the 06 NBA Finals loss, uh, I think you and your inner circle are up well past 6 a.m. Take me into that moment and kind of describe the scene and what's on your mind. Well, 06 was one of the most frustrating losses of my career. Uh, we were, you know, basically up 2-0 going to Miami in the finals. We were only two wins away. We're thinking this is, this is a wrap. Um, the, um, the, the Dallas Morning News, the paper here, had printed the parade route. And then we go down there and we lose three straight. And then we come back here and we, we're up 20 in game six. And when they come back and we lose in six games. And I remember just being so frustrated. We were so close to winning. It's like your heart gets ripped out a little bit. And, uh, but I always said to myself, hey, we have a young team. I'm still in my prime. At the end of the day, I think we'll be, we'll be right back there. And then next year came and we were rolling. We won 67 games. That was my MVP season. And we are the heavy favorites to win it all. Um, I'm feeling good at playing my best basketball. And we run into a hot team with the Golden State, and we lose in the first round. And in a way, I was more disappointed and frustrated after that loss than I was after the finals loss. That was, I think, the low point of my career. Was it? I think so. Uh, How did getting, it affect you? Just. I didn't want to leave my house uh, for a while. Uh, the good thing is my dad was there, my, my sister were there at the time. Um, so they kind of, you know, talked to me a little bit and trying to build me back up. But uh, that was probably the most frustrated and disappointed I was. Um, what are you thinking about then? Like, I, I let my team down, I let the city down, because I didn't play well that round. Uh, they were a tough matchup for me. They played me with two or three smalls. Every time I dribbled the ball, somebody else was coming, ripping the ball away. And I just, I, that was not my series. And uh, for two weeks, I felt like embarrassed to, to leave the house. And then I wanted to leave basically right away. And, uh, and I told, I told uh, the Mavericks that I was basically, I'm out of here, I'm frustrated. And then the NBA called and said, uh, you can't leave. There might be a possibility you're winning the MVP. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Of all years, this year, I, I, don't, I don't even want it, right? Just keep it. But then I stuck around a couple more days, and then they actually called and said, yeah, you, you won it. Because at the time, they were giving the MVP away in the second round. Of course, we weren't in the second round. So I had to do a little press conference here during the second round. And it was... I remember I didn't, I didn't even sleep the night before. Uh, I knew Mr. Stern was coming to give me the trophy, and there was a big press, press conference, and I, I wanted to be as far away as possible. That, that's the last uh, spot that I wanted to be was here, and I kind of got through it. Uh, I, I can't even remember what, what speech I gave, but uh, I know I was just so frustrated and embarrassed that we're not in the second round that uh, that, was a, that was a tough moment. You go from a low to a, a career life high in um, a, a matter of less than a, a couple years. Uh, you know, fa fast forward, it's game six of the NBA Finals. I think there are four seconds left, and you're already uh, in the locker room. What's on your mind? When I made it to the Olympics a couple years earlier, uh, I completely broke down. I was crying. I was hugging teammates. And so I kind of felt that same feeling coming on. And I just thought, hey, collect your thoughts a little bit. Go back to the locker room, have some tears, and then, and then you can come back out. And that's exactly what I did. And him jumping over the scores table to leave uh, when, we were, when we wanted to celebrate, I think you, you talk about the emotions uh, that everyone had. Um, you know, one for him to be able to jump over the, over the sports <laughs> table is one thing. I equate him to a gas tank on a really big car. And that gas tank was empty, and when you run out of gas at the very bottom, there's nothing left, and it runs pretty rough. And that's where he was at the end of that game. I needed a few minutes by myself, uh, even though 
our PR guy, the NBA PR guy, were chasing me down there. Where are you going? You got interviews, you got the trophy. And you didn't want to come back in, No, right? I didn't. At the time I just laid, there was, there was a little bench in the, in the Miami shower and I laid on that bench and had some tears and thought about, you know, all the hard work that it took to get there, all the people that helped me to get there. And um, so it was just uh, an emotional moment. And then uh, now Scott was saying the PR, you, you know, you're getting the trophy. And I was like, give it to somebody else. I don't want it. But then after like five minutes, I was totally fine. I, I'm now, of course, I'm super happy. I went back out. The photo is everywhere with me lifting the trophy for the first time. And and hugging everybody and being with my teammates. So I'm glad they pushed me back out. One of the things we talked about is, you know, we, we didn't, no one knew how to celebrate. Uh, no one, we were all rookies when we won the, in the sense of winning a championship. But to climb the mountaintop together, uh, it was surreal. Do you regret not allowing those close to you to fly in for the finals? I do a little bit after, yeah. My sister, I think, sometimes brings it up. She just rubs it in every now and then. I think what happened was, in 06, we were up 2-0, and the, my dad and my sister came in, and uh, we ended up losing the finals. We didn't win another game. So I didn't want, uh, I wanted to, whatever we were doing in 11 there in the playoffs to get us there, I didn't want to change anything. I don't want more people here now in my house. I, so I ended up saying, no, please don't come now to the finals. And uh, I do regret that a little bit. But you know how athletes sometimes are there. They live in their own heads and they're all head cases. And uh, so at the time, I was like, no, I, uh, I want to keep the same crew. After you qualified for the Olympics, uh, your dad comes into the locker room after. How well do you remember that? Yeah, I mean, I was I was already an emotional mess there uh, in the locker room as soon as we made it, and I was just laying on one of those physio benches. I had to rush back out to do an, a live interview with with uh, with the live TV that's filmed us uh, for years. And after like finally, I think five or ten minutes, I finally got myself back together. I'm about to go out, and then comes my dad, and then I don't know, I broke down again, and I ended up not even making it out to the interview, which the guy is still not happy that. I, that I didn't come out and do that live live interview. For real? Him. Yeah, he brings it up every now and then. But I've followed the Olympics ever since I can remember. You know, just and, and living in the village, it was just such a dream of mine to to accomplish that. And uh, when we did, I just uh, I broke down.